EV1 Drew will egress the airlock first, set up safety tethers, followed by EV2 Ricky with the crew lock bag. Ricky will start the translation by going up the seat of spur, the crew equipment translation aid, up to face one, and port on the vehicle over to the external stowage platform one, or ESP one, where the PFCS is currently located. At the worksite, Ricky will temp stow the crew lock bag. While this is going on, Drew will start his translation from the airlock via the Nader route on the vehicle over to the same ESP1 location. Once Drew arrives, he will start to configure the APFR or articulating portable foot restraint for later ingress and use. Ricky will start to set up the worksite by setting up the MUT end effector ball stack assembly or MUT ball stack assembly for a temporary stowage platform later. Drew will then work to remove the multi-layer insulation or MLI to expose the pump flow control subassembly. While Drew is doing this, Ricky will retrieve the gap spanner and install between two sets of handrails. This will aid in the translation later. Drew will then retrieve the S0 jumper stowed during US EVA 49 and begin to route and then will mate this particular jumper onto the flight support equipment or FSE. With the jumper routed, Ricky will then ingress the APFR, install two scoops. These are handling aids that will make the moving of the PFCS easier. Ricky will close the fluid quick disconnects. This will allow Drew to open the fluid QD bail. Ricky will then grab two scoops, one for himself and one for Drew, and the crew will then make their way out to the Special Purpose Dexterous Manipulator, SPDM, Enhanced ORU Temporary Platform, EOTP, where the spare PFCS is currently located. Once Drew arrives, he will install a scoop and then release the single bolt that is holding the degraded PFCS in location. Once the PFCS has been removed, he will present that to Ricky, who will also install a scoop that will aid in the translation of the failed PFCS over to the temporary stowage location. The crew will then return to the stowage location and temp stow the degraded unit here on the ball stack assembly. Drew will then ingress the APFR and begin to release the two bolts that are holding the spare PFCS in location. He will extract the PFCS and present it to Ricky, who will photo document and inspect the bottom side of the PFCS. The crew will then work together to move the PFCS from the ESP1 back out to the EOTP. Ricky will remove the scoop and the crew will work together to stow the PFCS and drive a single bolt. Drew will then remove the single scoop and the crew will make their way back to the ESP-1 worksite. Drew will ingress the APFR and Ricky will begin to remove the degraded PFCS from the temporary stowage location and pass that to Drew. The crew will work together to install the PFCS, removing scoops and replacing the MLI. The crew will then reconfigure the APFR. Ricky will retrieve the APFR and begin his translation to the S0 location to begin work with the robotic arm. At the S0 truss, Ricky will allow the robotic arm to come into the worksite where he will perform a safety tether swap and install the APFR onto the latching end effector. Once the APFR is installed, Ricky will ingress the APFR and via the robotic operator will fly to the camera port 13 worksite. While that is going on, Drew will continue to clean up the worksite at ESP-1, retrieving all tools and tethers and stowing them inside the crew lock bag. He will retrieve the crew lock bag as well as the WIF extender or the worksite interface extender. Drew will then start his translation via the Nader route back to the airlock where he will stow the WIF extender on the equipment lock. Once the WIF extender is stowed, he will retrieve the crew lock bag, temp stow it in the airlock and retrieve the spare camera group and make his way out to the camera port 13 worksite where Ricky has been working. Ricky will receive a scoop from Drew to install onto the degraded camera group. Once the scoop is installed, the crew will work together to temporarily stow the degraded unit on the lab.
Once the camera group is temp stowed, Drew will hand off the ORU, or on-orbit replaceable unit bag, that has the spare camera group in it to Ricky, retrieve the degraded camera group unit, and make his way back to the airlock, where he will temp stow the degraded unit and retrieve the spare space-to-ground transmitter receiver controller and make his way over to the Z1 location. Ricky will then install the spare camera group into camera port 13 and via the robotic operator, go back to the S0 truss where he will deconfigure his tether, egress the APFR, and temp stow the ORU bag. Once the ORU bag is temp stowed, Ricky will grab the APFR, retrieve it from the latching end defector, and make his way port to the Crew Equipment Translation Aid, or CETA cart, where he will stow the APFR for later use on an upcoming EVA. Once the APFR is stowed, Ricky will make his way back toward S0, where he will pick up his ORU bag, and then make his way back to the airlock. While this has been going on, Drew has been working to set up the Z1 SGTRC worksite, installing a ball stack and mud end defector, configuring the ORU bag into an appropriate location, retrieving the spare SGTRC, and putting it into a conducive worksite. Drew will then make his way to the forward side of Z1 and remove the degraded SGTRC and temp stow it near the ORU bag. He will then retrieve the spare SGTRC and install into this location. Once the install is complete, Drew will start the cleanup of this worksite, stowing the failed unit inside the ORU bag and retrieving all tools and tethers used at this worksite. Once Drew has retrieved the ORU bag, he will make his way back to the airlock for ingress. Ricky will start the ingress, opening the thermal cover. Drew will then hand him the ORU bag, ingress, and that will be the end of EVA 50.